Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. This one should be interesting. As you can see, I'm reviewing Music Player. <laughs> uh, I didn't know what I was expecting for the packaging and the labeling, but uh, I wasn't expecting such a generic title. Anyway, uh, I was contacted by a company called Gracioso, I think. I'm guessing it's Spanish. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, they make a lot of audio products, and they asked me if I wanted to review anything, and I looked through their stuff, and this caught my eye. This squircle, square circle object thing. You might be able to tell already what it is. Uh, you might not, actually. <laughs> but uh, this looked very interesting, because I, I haven't really seen a product quite like this. So, uh, just uh, before I actually show you what this exactly is uh pricing is i think 55 bucks it's currently on sale for 49.99 and then there's 10 percent off so basically you can get this for 45 bucks as of the time of filming that might change anyway so not like dirt cheap but also not stupid expensive either uh comes in four colors i'm skirting around what this exactly is but just just follow with me uh, comes in white, blue, pink, black. I have no idea what what one I got. And you can see there's a DVD. What? There's a DVD version. Okay. <laughs> Let's just put that aside for a sec. Model number is KC806. And it says portable CD player with Bluet. Bluet. With Bluet. That's, that's literally what it says. Bluetooth, FM radio, uh, U-disc, which is basically USB. Uh, and auxiliary input. So this is basically like a portable stereo uh, that has pretty much everything built in. And the coolest part is how it, how the the actual CD mechanism is located. Uh, so anyway, I'm just gonna pop this up. Oh, there's quick instructions for use. If you are so inclined to read that, you may. Anyway. Oh, they sent me the white one. Nice. <clears throat> white one looks very clean. Wow, this is larger than I thought. Um, looking at the uh, the pictures online, it looks like it'd be smaller, but I guess it makes sense because it's limited by the size of a CD. So obviously it could not be smaller than that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> unhappy you feel. Don't worry, baby. You have my. You have our words. <laughs> Unhappy you feel, don't worry, baby, you have our words. Wow, that, those are like the lyrics for a very catchy 80s pop so song. Unhappy you feel, don't worry, baby, you have our words. I'm just cooking. Um, that's fantastic. <laughs> anyway, this is just one of those warranty cards saying that there's 90 days money back guarantee, one year replacement warranty, and lifetime customer service support. Lifetime meaning the lifetime of the company. Anyway, uh, yeah, happy for this purchase. If you don't know how to express your newfound joy, we've got a few suggestions. Okay, this this side's better translated. This side is just a gold mine. I I'm keeping this. I'm going to laminate this and put this in my wallet and carry it around with me. Because that is a fantastic translation. Anyway, it comes with a USB brick, yes. So this is, I believe, USB-C, thank God. Uh, but it does actually come with a brick, so you could plug it in. Uh, this brick is uh, 5 volts, 2 amps, so actually decently useful. We have the cord, which let's do the obligatory how long is this cord test. Also comes with an aux cord, which is seemingly of a decent length as well. Uh, it's like two and a half, three feet long, so yes. That's also a good addition. The USB cord looks decently long as well. Never say no to spare USB-C cords. And this one is, oh, it's easily like six feet long. Yay, just round of applause, gracias. So you made the cord a decent usable length. That is actually, that sounds like something that should be like trivial and expected, but a lot of companies don't, so this is actually useful. Thank you. So we have that. We have a remote, an IR remote, which thankfully uh, has plenty of buttons, it looks like. Pretty much for everything. Bluetooth on, off, USB, scan, FM, CD, repeat, AB. 
Uh, pretty much all the buttons you would expect on like a CD player. And this guy uses AAA batteries, good. So that'll come in handy. Last but not least, we have the user manual. Nicely, oh, it's only like eight pages. Okay, fair enough. This isn't that complex of a product, but yeah, it's nicely illustrated. Looks pretty good. The C play comes very well wrapped. Definitely not worried about this like getting damaged during shipping. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Get off my fingers. Okay, this is one of these like stand up models, so I appreciate that as well. My desk will. Oh. Uh, so it just sort of, let's just kind of zoom out a bit. It just sort of sits up at like a nice angle. This is actually really nice. Uh, the plastic feels, it's matte. It's not glossy. Feels okay, actually. It's not like cheap. There's no flex in it. It's actually really strong. So the plastic quality is good. Uh, it's like a nice matte, so it won't show fingerprints. That's good as well. Uh, we have rubber feet on the bottom, so non-skid. So it's like that. It looks very nice, actually. I definitely like that. Uh, the front lid covers a CD. I wonder if there's like a... No, it's like frosted. Interesting. And there's some like dust or something on it already. Yeah, it's like uh, frosted. And there's interestingly enough, there's like a pattern on it. You can see like a line here and a line here. No idea why that is. It's like slightly more frosted there than in the middle. But I guess that sort of makes sense. Um, it's, I guess so you could see the artwork or something. Anyway, the whole point of making this uh, clear is so that you could see the disc spinning, which I know it's not really, it's not practical. It's kind of silly if you think about it, but I actually love this idea of being able to see the artwork. Like, obviously not while you're playing the CD, like, you could see the artwork of the disc while it's just like sitting there, but when you turn it on, it gives you something to watch while you're listening to the music, I guess. I don't know. But I, I like that. I have a Sony uh, mini CD system. Let me throw in a pic right now. So you could see that it actually has a similar idea where it's, it, in that case, the Sony system I have is slot loading, it's vertical slot loading which is already very unique, but also you could see the disc while it's rotating, which I always thought was really cool. The entire reason why I got that player, and this follows that, so I really like that. Let's take a look at the mechanism. We have a protective sheet here, and it says remove before, uh, remove this paper CD before using. And all it does is it, it makes sure that the laser lens doesn't shift around in shipping and possibly damage itself. There is a, uh, a label here that says, do not touch the lens, spelled L-E-N-S-E. -E. That's interesting. Uh, we have the entire mechanism is on a compliant mount, and it actually does seem pretty springy, so that's good. Uh, we have like one of these click in, click out things, and there is an LED. I, I It was kind of hard telling from the pictures, but yeah, it looks like it does kind of backlight the disc as it's in there. That's really cool. Um, I wonder what color this LED is. Probably blue, because everything's a blue LED now. I would maybe have liked to see more LEDs or like a ring around here or something. That would have been cool too. But yeah, let's just see how effective that is, because most of that light is going to go right and bounce back from the bottom of the CD. So it, it's probably going to be pretty subtle. But yeah, it's a little bit frosted, the uh, plastic, but good enough. You could definitely see kind of whatever disc you put in there. Uh, we have like a bunch of hole patterns all on the front surface, and this guy has a built-in, I believe it has two speakers built-in, probably like here and here, I don't, it's hard to kind of see. Uh, there is some sort, oh uh, yeah, that's probably for the IR, there's like, the holes are actually, you could see through them right there. It's probably for the remote. Yeah, I can just about see the speakers are in these two corners. And they actually do have some sort of porting on here, so hopefully that, uh... That means sound quality is half decent. Rated power is 10 watts. So obviously, rated voltage, what? <laughs> so rated power, 10 watts, rated voltage, typo, voltage, I'm guessing, 
uh, 5 volts, 2 amps. So obviously that's how they're getting the 10 watts. It's 5 times 2. That's not the audio power, though. It's just the power consumption, the rated nominal power consumption. Anyway, uh, we have some cooling vents here. We have screw holes. Ooh, I'm going to have to open this, aren't I? Hopefully I can do so without damaging it. Uh, because I don't, I only see the two screws at the top and maybe under the sticker, maybe I have to pry something. I don't know. Probably have to remove the feet or something. Anyway, we'll, we'll do a teardown later if I can. On the top, we actually have this nice, uh, I believe it's a white LED display. We have uh, mode button, plus minus, uh, play pause, and then track forward and backwards. On the side, we have a full-size USB port, so you can plug in a thumb drive with MP3s. I, I'm under the assumption, I have to test this, that this can read MP3 CDs. If so, that is fantastic, and I will love that and use that. Uh, there's the auxiliary slash headphone jack, so I guess I'm going to have to test if that does headphone jack output as well. That'd be really cool if it doubled up as both aux and headphone out. And a USB-C charger port with a indicator hole next to it, so show you when it's charging. And the battery life on this, uh, I don't know battery life, but the rated battery is 4,000 milliamp hours. And just feeling it, it's like decently hefty enough. Yeah, it probably has 18650s shoved in here somewhere. So yeah, it's perfectly reasonable. It should give you decent runtime. There is a, oh, I wonder if the remote sensor's here. Then what in the world is this? Because yeah, there's sort of this like semi-opaque window that's like sort of translucent looking so i wonder if the ir sensor is there and an on off switch let's just turn it on it says hi and we're on cd mode bluetooth oh yeah this uh, by bluetooth they mean this is a bluetooth receiver oh and yeah it is a blue light so you can use this as a bluetooth speaker so that's definitely getting your money's worth it does not I don't believe, I have to check, I don't think this transmits Bluetooth. That would be neat, but eh. Uh, we have radio, jeez. Uh, pretty loud. <laughs> so yeah, we have radio, line, and then we go back to CD. Let's see how loud the volume goes numerically wise. So 30 is maximum. I'm just going to turn that down before I accidentally, like, deafen myself. Oh, I kind of, I wonder if to receive, wait, this is an RGB LED. Yeah, because that's blue and green. Wait, what? Yeah, I don't know. That might be RGB or at least blue and green because that definitely was lit kind of a, an aquish color. Yeah, so that's a multicolor LED. Interesting. And it does remember your volume from when you last shut it off. That is awesome. Uh, clearly, I don't have a CD in here, so i um, going to have to grab a CD or something like that. The radio, though, oh yeah, it says end disc. End disc. No disc. Anyway, uh, yeah, and there are other symbol graphics underneath the uh, here. Let's just see if I can pick up a radio station and hopefully uh, play like half a second of it and not get sued out of existence. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah, so it worked. Oh, it changes color based off of what mode it's in. That's really cool. Yeah, it is an RGB LED because now it's like yellow slash orange. That's really cool. Uh, so, yeah, good thing is... You don't, I was w worried you might need like the, the, uh, line in jack plugged in to get radio stations, but no, it looks like it has like an internal antenna that seems to work just fine. At least where I live, let's just see in the other modes, what color. So CDs sort of, uh, aqua or teal Bluetooth is just blue. That makes sense. Radio is purple ish. And then line is orange slash yellow. Yeah, and there we go. We go back to CD. Yeah, so let me grab... I'm going to have to burn like a royalty-free CD, aren't I? Because I don't have any CDs that have music that you're allowed to play on YouTube. So give me one sec. I'm 
probably just going to use this for a little while, test it out, and then come back to you and then demo everything to you guys. So give me one sec. It'll be one sec for you guys, but at least a week for me. Okay, so here we are. This took uh, quite a bit longer than I thought. Uh, I've had this guy for well over a month, and I've used this pretty safe to say almost every single day. This was far more useful than I thought it would be. Um, I I like listening to like news and weather and whatnot when I'm getting ready in the morning, uh, especially like while I'm taking my shower. It's about that time. Uh, so I have this tuned to a local radio station that has all that playing in the background and it's timed pretty precisely. So like I know when I've been in the shower for like X amount of time and I need to get out because I need to uh, to get on the road at a certain time so I make it to work on time. Anyway, um, beside my use case notwithstanding, this makes actually a fantastic sort of bathroom radio, as weird as that sounds. Uh, the speakers, they are pretty small. They're only, what would that be? Maybe about like an inch or two. I think probably about an inch uh, if you shine a flashlight through here. And there's two of them. They're not, they get pretty decently loud. They're not like super bassy or anything like that, but they're good enough for like just general listening. Uh, and I found out one or two things that weren't immediately obvious, but are like super useful about this unit. I'm just going to demonstrate real quick. Um, I'm going to have to turn down the volume. Obviously, this has all copyrighted music and whatnot, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, it working. So I'm just going to turn down the volume all the way. So it's on zero. Should start playing the CD. And by the way, this does play MP3 CDs, so that is fantastic. Uh, no problems. I just burnt a CD with a bunch of MP3s on them. It'll read them, play them real quick. Really good. It's playing. It's track six, and that's the elapsed time. That flickery is is not apparent in real life. That's only from the uh, the refresh rate of the camera that I'm using to film this on. But yeah, you can see it works. It looks really cool. I love the way that it like backlights the disc. Uh, and this color changes depending on what the mode is. So right now it's CD. It's sort of this teal color. If I go to USB, it'll immediately start reading, and then it changes to uh, green. And you can see the disc is slowing down now because it's reading off the USB stick. Press mode again. Bluetooth is obviously blue. And it's searching for something to connect to. Um, so this is Bluetooth receiver mode. This is a radio, turns purple. And then auxiliary or line in is yellow. Now if I just go to CD again, a really cool thing that I um, didn't realize at first so you can play CDs through the, the built-in speakers, clearly. If you press and hold mode, though, the Bluetooth symbol comes on and starts flashing. Uh, I'm just going to switch this off real quick. Uh, so what that means is uh, in certain modes, you can actually transmit Bluetooth, not just receive. So while you're playing a CD, you can have this paired to a Bluetooth speaker that sounds much better than this. Uh, and it works perfectly. It transmits to it. And I've actually used it that way a couple times when I wanted better audio quality but didn't want to have to plug in, you know, an auxiliary jack into this guy. This can actually both receive and transmit Bluetooth, which I expected the, the receive part but not the transmit. And that works flawlessly. Fantastic. It's really cool. You can even use Bluetooth headphones to listen to CDs. Uh, that's really awesome. Uh, in terms of uh, like use, the radio station sensitivity is pretty decent. Uh, like I said, I had this in my bathroom. It's uh, not the best like location. There's no antenna that like sticks out, and yet I never had any trouble receiving like my uh, most listened to radio stations. So that worked fantastically. Uh, let me grab the remote for a sec. So the remote, every button that's on the unit is replicated on the remote and more. As a quick presets for like the main features, USB, FM, uh, Bluetooth, CD, obviously. And if you're on the CD player, especially useful for like either the USB or a, an MP3 CD, you could type in the exact track number and it'll go straight to the track. That is fantastic. Uh, in pretty much any mode, if you press and hold repeat, or maybe not press and hold, I think you just hit repeat, it'll... Um, 
uh, voice will chime in saying, you know, repeat one, repeat all, shuffle. So you can actually change the play mode, which is really useful. I was not expecting this to have like shuffle, for instance, because that's something I like listening to music on shuffle. So that's fantastic. The uh, radio mode, you can have presets. So when you tune in with, you know, the track forward and back buttons, you can manually tune or if you press and hold, it'll scan to like the next strongest station. Um, when you press and hold, say one, for instance, uh, it'll flash on the display the uh, the tuning number, and now when you press one, that's a preset to whatever station that you uh, programmed as that. So you can use this to to have multiple stations that you can quickly go to. Uh, it's like really intuitive. I did not read the manual to find out any of these features. I just sort of played with the remote, and like within ten minutes, I found that it had all these extra features. So that's really cool. Um, remote. Works pretty well, like uh, distance wise. I don't even have to point the remote at the unit and it picks it up. I'm guessing like it's hidden amongst one of these holes. Works really well. Uh, things that I think could be improved. Uh, well, actually, before we get to that, battery life also really good with a caveat. Um, there's soft power and hard power. There's a, a hard power button on the side here that you can physically like disconnect the battery or not. If you leave it in, if you leave the hard power switch on, but you switch on and off with the soft power on here, that sort of works like how you'd expect sort of like a like a boombox or a micro system that's like always plugged in to work. It'll just power on and off with here uh, with the button on the remote. But the problem with that is um, the battery still drains even while it's off. It drains slow enough that you'll still be able to use this like for one week until like it totally dies. Uh, so at first I didn't realize this and I left it on and then like by the end of the week, the battery just cut off halfway through listening. And I thought, wow, this is supposed to have like a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And you know, it only lasted like one week of listening, maybe not even an hour a day. That didn't seem like a lot to me. And then I realized that I left the switch on. And so for the next week I fully charged it and then I would turn it on and off with this switch. And I actually haven't charged it since, and it's been well over a month. So clearly that shows that the soft standby power of this isn't super efficient, but if you manually turn on and off that switch, uh, it does a lot better of a job. Uh, one thing to note, I also had this uh, USB plugged in the whole time, and uh, it seems to always power that if this switch is left on. So maybe removing that could give you a little better of a soft power um, battery life, but it just seems, yeah, you kind of want to just leave this in the off position when you're not using it. I guess if you left it plugged into a USB-C port, you could always leave this on and then just toggle this with the remote to turn it on and off, uh, remotely. Um, that's just sort of, I mean, it's not really, as long as you're aware of what it's doing with the power and the battery management and all that, you can get decent battery life out of this, but yeah, first time I used this, I thought it had real crappy battery life because I left it on uh, and pretty much draining power even when I wasn't even home. But yeah, uh, like I said, you technically don't need the remote. You have all these buttons. You can just directly use it, but I really like the remote. It's really useful. Uh, and like I said, certain features like uh, changing the play mode, you can't do without the remote. So do not lose this guy. Uh, one thing, I really like the styling of this. This is actually like aesthetically very pleasing, except for I wish the screen were kind of on the front maybe, uh, because oftentimes you, you can't, when this is uh, flat on a table, you can't see the screen without standing directly over the unit. Uh, it does have a very nice screen. I, I really like it's super high contrast. It looks, you know, decently bright. Uh, easy to read, but just it being at a, a you know a vertical angle, you, you can't see it from the front, uh, which is slightly annoying. Uh, other than that, uh, I really like the design of this. The fact that it you know stands up on its own, it has like nice rubber feet, uh, does have like base ports on the back. Like I said, it's n even like a mediocre uh, stand like standalone portable Bluetooth speaker will sound better than this. Uh, but it, I sort of forgive that because you can actually attach this to a Bluetooth speaker anyway, either over auxiliary or 
just Bluetooth wireless. So I sort of forgive its audio shortcomings, especially, you know, the price of this is like, what, around the 50-ish dollar mark? So it's not super expensive and, you know, it's chock full of features in terms of like playback uh, media and, and different modes and stuff like that. So I definitely think that this is, is worth the price, the asking price, if you need sort of a standalone uh, combined radio, CD player, MP3, CD player, MP3, USB player, auxiliary input, Bluetooth receive and transmit, all that all in one. I think this is actually a pretty decent deal. Uh, another thing that I thought was eh, I'm kind of eh about, this uh, door doesn't really open super wide. So when you're trying to get a CD out and the fact that it opens like facing down, you always have to pick up the uh, unit to pull the CD out. Uh, that's sort of less than ideal. I kind of wish maybe if it opened to the side so that I could reach in from left to the right, um, what, without having to touch the unit, I could just pull the CD out, but you can see here, it's like real awkward because the door doesn't give me a lot of room to work in. It is slightly frosted. Um, but when you close it fully, you can definitely still read like any text or artwork on the CD. And I've sat there just like while listening to music, watching the CD spin, and it looks really cool. I definitely think I give them full marks on that. Uh, the aesthetic of the spinning disc is really cool. So yeah, overall, 100% uh, I would recommend this. Uh, so long as you're not expecting like super ridiculously good audio quality from this, uh, just looking at the little speakers, that should tell you you know, the little speakers in each corner that should tell you what the audio quality of this sh is roughly basically a small room. Um, and it's not super high fidelity. If you have a Bluetooth speaker, attach it to this and it will sound infinitely better and still not take up, you know, super lot of room. Yeah. And just overall, I think if I had to summarize how I feel about this product, if I were to have spent like the 50 around the 50 or $60 mark, I think it was, uh, to buy this, uh, it was way more useful than I thought uh, for my particular use case. It may vary for you, but yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with this. This will be a permanent resident in my bathroom as like a shower radio sort of thing. Uh, and I will definitely use this pretty much every single day. Uh, it ended up replacing, I had a little tiny anchor sound core uh, Bluetooth speaker that has like a built in radio. That was annoying. You had to plug in a USB cord to act as the antenna. This is fully self-contained. And actually the um, like the reception of the radio on this guy is better than the Anchor the Soundcore mini speaker thing that I was using before. So overall, this is definitely an upgrade for me. Okay, so I'm in my bathroom, how I have this set up normally. And uh, we're just gonna play. I finally got around to putting some royalty-free music on the uh, USB stick there. So we're going to turn it on, switch it to USB. And one thing I will note, the volume, this is as low as it goes before shutting off. So zero is off. I wish there were a couple steps in between that. That would have been nice. Let's just pump this up. I believe it goes up to 30. Yeah. back down but yeah that's uh, reasonably loud and uh, she sounds like pretty good to me at least in this small bathroom it gets plenty loud enough bass isn't excessive but then again like these speakers are tiny but yeah just playing right off this USB stick just standard mp3 is nothing special I did to convert them this off. Yeah, uh, like I said before though, um, just switch that back on for one sec to show you. Uh, if you press and hold, yeah, if you press repeat, it says one, all, and then shuffle. So now it's on shuffle. For some reason, um, when it does that, it has like a spoken Chinese lady say shuffle all one but it also uh, increases the volume of the audio so you can't hear it. It's weird, but eh, whatever. It works, and you can see on the screen what mode it's in anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna sh switch this off now. 
I just want to give you guys a demo of how it sounds because I realized that I only have copyrighted stuff on CD and whatnot, so I didn't have a way of actually demoing the audio quality. Sorry about the echoey nature. I'm in a bathroom. What do you expect? And I guess the last thing that I want to do is um, I kind of want to open this up. I see two screw holes, and I can just about feel that there are hidden screw holes under here. Yeah, I can feel holes right here. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver, and we're going to pop this open just to see what the internal build quality, the external build quality is really good. Uh, but I want to see how it's built inside uh, to see if this is going to last a long time, to see if the battery is conceivably the rated 5,000 milliamp battery. So give me one sec to grab a screwdriver. Okay, for uh, self-tapping Phillips and a thinnish screwdriver, and we are in. Like, I thought there were screws hidden under there. There are four clips, it looks like. Uh, yeah, you can see them right about there. Had to pry a little bit. Whole thing sort of starts to come apart. Yeah, there you go. You can see the mechanism on the, uh, the lid there. Basically just has like this little clicky, springy thing and then another little springy thing. And yeah, it's pretty simplistic, but uh, hopefully that would be reliable long term. And the LED just pokes through. Yeah, it's just soldered to the board. Here we have the actual laser head. And it looks like, yeah, they do have like uh, rubber support things. I did notice while playing around with this, uh, you could actually bang it hard enough to lose tracking. It does seem to have like some buffer memory, uh, probably only like a minute or so though. But I did notice that uh, if you hit it hard enough, it could lose tracking and then take like a couple seconds to recover. Uh, you can see the speakers here, yeah. They they are pretty much, yeah, one inch-ish, maybe a little more. And uh, it does look like they do have some foam surround material. And uh, so, yeah, that's about that. And uh, we do have, wow, okay, yeah, the IR, if I just bump this up a bit, the IR sensor is up here. And, yeah, you can see there are holes in the case to allow that to go through. Uh, the... Display board is actually a completely separate board. And it looks like it is multiplex. There is a ZIF connector on a ribbon. But uh, the LED display itself, I can see there's only like seven, yeah, about seven pins on there. And there's no other uh, chips or anything. So probably uh, this light baffle part, there's probably just bare LEDs, like surface man LEDs there. Or maybe the um, the chip flip type. Uh, and they're wire bonded to the board, but yeah, that's very interesting. There is just hot glue holding that in. And, uh, let's see what else we got. Looks like the main chip is here, and that appears to be a Sun Plus SPHE8104GW, and it's marked, uh, 2153, so, uh, it looks like the 53rd week. Huh? What? <laughs> Uh, maybe 2021. I don't know. It's might be uh, not a regular date code or something. Might be reading that wrong. Uh, we can see the crystal oscillator here. The uh, RAM chip is here, which is a M12L64164A ESMT branded. Uh, I can just about see the battery under there. I'm gonna pull this board off. All uh, these connectors, this one at least, is uh, glued. This one looks like it has some glue. This one looks like it doesn't. And uh, this one looks like it goes to the speakers probably. This is the, the motor control for the optical drive. This appears to be the battery. Yeah, I can see B plus, B minus is written on the silk screen there. Uh, we can see an inductor here that's for the power. That's like right next to the USB-C input. So that's like power regulation. There's some more regulator stuff going on here, probably for either boost converting or uh, the switch mode charging. Uh, we see the USB connector, nice big cap next to it, and that's good. Uh, you, the uh, auxiliary input, uh, the right angle surface mount switches, the Bluetooth antenna is right here. We can see that connects to this chip, and this chip is probably the Bluetooth uh, transmit slash receive. Uh, yeah. I'm really not gonna see too much uh, without pulling more stuff out. One of these connectors is gonna have to 
disconnect. There we go. And, oh, missed a screw. Yeah, the board layout looks really nice. Uh, it is mostly empty on the inside. Oh, I forgot to point out. Big uh, antenna there. Just snakes all around. Goes from here and then uh, snakes to the uh, left-hand side. So, yeah, thanks to that, that would be the... Uh, for the AM or the FM radio, rather, you do have a ZIF connector here. These aren't ZIF connectors, actually. They are friction fit. <laughs> do take a little bit of force. Yeah, you can see just about here uh, the spindle motor as well as the motor for the uh, worm gear drive for the sled. Just gonna. Yeah, probably the uh, antenna is soldered to the board, hard soldered. Looks like there is a connector actually. So maybe at one point they were gonna make it, you know, have a, a regular removable connector on that. Looks like it is hard soldered though and it's hot glued after it's soldered and uh, put into the unit. So that might be kind of annoying. I'm just gonna try to shimmy this out just enough to see that battery. Hopefully I can. There we go. We can lift this a bit. Yeah, it's a pretty chunk and huge battery. Well, relatively speaking. So yeah, um, probably adhesived too. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it's actually uh, two batteries in parallel, which would make sense uh, because this size battery uh, is probably going to be about 2,000 to 2,500 milliamp hours. So if you put two of them in parallel, that's how you get your 5,000 milliamp hours. The actual size of them and the thickness looks about right. So I'd be pretty willing to bet that that is indeed uh, the correct capacity. There is a little sticker here. Okay, it says 4,000 milliamp hours. If I'm, there we go. Yeah. So 4.8 watt hours, 4,000 milliamp hours. So it's a little bit less. Uh, I might be misremembering them. Maybe it does say on the listing 4,000 milliamp hours, but for some reason, the number 5,000 is stuck in my head. But yeah, like about four to 5,000 milliamp hours. That looks about correct for that. Uh, all the buttons have foam underneath too uh, to limit their like rattling, it looks like. I'm just going to insert this, making sure that the switch is in the right position. I'm just going to insert this so I don't screw up, up any of the, uh, anything too bad. Uh, okay. And uh, let me just put this back to that, together real quick. And uh, I'll be with you in one sec. Okay, one last mystery to unravel. How does it detect whether the lid is open or closed? Well, looks like there is a tiny little magnet here uh, on this pivot that uh, opens and kind of closes with the door. And there is a tiny little Hall effect sensor. So that's a little magnetic sensor there. And that is what detects it. Uh, this screwdriver should be slightly magnetized, so I kind of wonder if I can trick it. Let's see, hi. It says CD. It should be... It should say open in a sec. Maybe if I try to play it. Yeah, it says open. If I put this, yep. As soon as I put that, it tries to read and you could see the uh, the laser moving there slightly. Yeah, so that's how it does that. That's rather interesting. Okay, let's get this uh, all buttoned up and make sure it still works. Okay, so we are all back together and it is reading the disc. Once again, that flicker only shows up on camera. And uh, let's just push that down. Yeah, um, oh yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention. When you switch it off, it remembers where you were either on the CD or the radio or the USB. It remembers all those, that data, so it'll whatever volume you set, all the settings it remembers, which is fantastic. Not every device does all that. So yeah, this was much better than I thought it would be. I thought it would just be okay, like an okay cheap little radio CD player boombox like thing. But yeah, I can definitely see myself getting a lot of use out of this. Uh, once again, huge thanks to the manufacturer for sending this guy in. This was something that was, um, quite frankly, actually 
going to be very useful um, in my day to day. And uh, hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully you like the quick impromptu teardown. I thought it would be interesting to uh, take a look inside of this, especially since it's so easy to get into. This looks like it would be very uh, repairable. And because of how much empty space there is inside, you could probably fit even larger and like an even larger battery pack like underneath the CD mechanism as long as it was thin enough. You could probably shove like a ridiculously large battery uh, inside of this. So that would be actually pretty interesting to look into in the future. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys like this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.